we continue on part two of uh, the gift of sensitivity. This is the Edikais Mary's Ministries, uh, a service of the Presbyterian uh, Church. We are full gospel. We are full gospel. Please do pray for our ministry. Do pray for our ministry. I welcome you, all of you all over the world who are uh, watching this by Ustream live. I welcome you and I thank you. Um, there have been many requests that we have received uh, from our um, from those who are involved and who follow what we are doing sincerely with a good motive. There have been requests um, for us to share the abundance of the blessings of God with the world out there. So we are calling on you to please do um, release your donations, whether financial donation or in any type of material resources so that we can also be able to release it to those who are involved with us in ministry and who also look up to God in us. Okay, let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you. We thank you very much for you are the God who always think good things about us. And because you do, we value you just as you value us. You are um, a God of inestimable worth to us. You are a great God. And we are also priceless to you. We call on you, dear Holy Spirit. We call on you to remember the blood and the name of Jesus. We, we, are, we are asking that today that you will make us to, to, to be sensitive to those things that we are supposed to be sensitive about. Yes, Lord. We also come to receive fruitful giftedness, fruitful miracles, signs and wonders so that our faith will grow, so that we will not only see what you do, but will also know your ways, so that by knowing your ways, our life will change radically for the better. Amen. I want to read to you from, I want to read to you, by the way, this is Reverend Idika Ago Imeri, uh, who has been sharing with you this morning. Um, I want to read to you from Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. And this is what it says. It says thus, And the man, that is Adam, said, This this one at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was generated out of a man. Genesis chapter 2 verse 23. She was generated out of a man. And now let me continue to share with you part two of the gift of sensitivity. You see, a lot of people, as I have watched life carefully, they walk through life without being sensitive to the things in life. They are not sensitive to the laws of the universe. They are not sensitive to the laws of God. They are neither sensitive to the laws of human beings, to the laws that, that uh, are embedded and encoded in the intermingling of the male and female. Now, one of the saddest things that has happened to human history has been the bringing out of darkness 
things that were happening in darkness has been brought from darkness into the 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 into the into into downtown that's how i'm gonna put it into downtown when you read the scripture carefully you see human thought politics emotions um the dynamics of human rationality cannot um cannot make nonsensical the laws of God that has been released among humanity. Okay. And one of the things I cannot understand up till today is why a man should call another man a wife or another woman will call another woman a husband. I don't get it. Um, but you see, religion should not waste its time fighting those who hold on to such um, empirical or logis uh, logistic, uh, can I call it logical enterprise, because it will be sheer wasting of energy. The demonstration of redemption is what we should be about the demonstration of redemption should bet it should bet um a reformation a realignment a recalibrating or le a recalibration of the human thinking and this happens when the spirit of god plays a part in the demonstration of the cross among humanity by us we have to be sensitive to that part of the gospel whereby we do not make an enemy of anybody because of the position that they hold the position they hold um in their uh, philosophical um, um, assumption, presumption, and conclusion. We should not. Okay. Our life should be, we should be sensitive to the fact that when human beings hold um, empirical, um, empirical uh, submissions or premise, our job should not be to combat them that it is neither good nor bad yin and yang our job should be to go back to what the ancient theologians used to say that if truly you say you are a theologian then truly you must be one that prays one that is familiar with the almighty for someone who prays is someone who is familiar with the maker of the universe. He is, is someone who understands not just the act but also the ways, and not just the ways but also the act, because both of them must go together. So there is nothing like there is nothing like you know the word of God, but then you do not know the generating power of god that actually make a thing work for we have been taught to embrace the bible but we have not been taught to embrace the person that generated that inspired that authenticated and brought forth the word of life which we read and that is why some people go to the word of god they discover life other people go into it, they discover a novel, they discover a history, poetry, and they discovered tradition and culture. See? They discover a foreign society, foreign to their own um, to their own culture. See, that that is but when you when you go into it with the spirit of God possessing you, living inside you whereby you are a shrine a temple of the living god um 
when you go into it with the Almighty, who himself is the author of the word, there is a change, a mighty change, whereby the word is not just a written word, it becomes um, they, they, it becomes um, the word of God, they verbum, it becomes the word of God, it becomes revelation, it becomes revelation, it, it, it speaks to the core of your identity, it speaks to the might of your clarity. Um, let, let, me, let me begin to say this. The gift of sensitivity is a gift that we should begin to ask the Lord to give to us as Christians. Because in the religious circle, in the Christian enterprise, we've lost touch with the gift of sensitivity. And that is why God is speaking more and more through me to awaken the sleeping beauty, the, 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 the ice uh, uh, tundra giant called the people of God, the church, and the religious world, the political world, the world of the intellect out there that enjoys it, to be awakened to the fact that we should begin once again to acknowledge, to, to begin to interact again with our environment and not just with our TV, our electronic gadgets and ourselves and that is how we limit it. But here in Genesis chapter 2 verse 23, the word of God strictly begin to speak to us about how we should become sensitive to the female species, to the woman, to the female human, our daughters, our wives, our mothers. It says here, you see, when God, if you read the entire story, when God has made Adam, the man from the earth, okay, uh, we, we are ground people because we live on the earth. That's how the Bible put it. We are ground people. We are not water people. We are not a people. We are ground people. People who come from the ground, who walks on the ground, who lives on the ground. Our living comes from the ground, not from the heavens, that is the sky. Although we do shoot game from the sky, you know, when they are, yeah. And we do eat fish from the water, you know. That's not what I'm, I'm not trying to speculate on those things. But what we are speaking this morning is this. When, when God brought the, the, the creatures that he has formed to Adam, he gave him the, or, or the, 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 the audacity of authority to name them. Whatever Adam named them, that became their name. That became their names. Adam did play, move about, and have a lot of fun, a good time with the animals. But you see, we have to be sensitive to the fact that the God who created a human being is a sensitive God. He is sensitive to our yearning. He is sensitive to what we truly need. So when, 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 when Jesus said, when ye pray, when Jesus said to us, we shall pray, pray, have conversation with God. Let God know how you feel. Let God know how you think. Let God know what you need. When Jesus made those statements, there were a statement of clarity. There were a source statement. There were a power statement. 
And what am I trying to say? He said that um, the Almighty thinking about you and calling you into existence through the intermingling of the natural earth and spirit and mind making you a human, a complete human, means that we who have been made by him need him for he has the code to our system therefore because life was called into existence by god and we as life also were called generated as spirit out of god into flesh therefore we have always to go back to the source and the source is god and let me share something that is very interesting here nobody asked god to create him nobody asked god to make a woman or a man make the fish make the animal make the plant create water we need water a we need a to breathe fire to cook to warm ourselves the earth to plant our crops you see we did not ask god to do those things god has the gift of sensitivity and he himself being a sensitive god created everything put these things all in place for us before we came into existence so that we don't lack nothing so why should after god has spent his resources to have put for us the resources that we need why then should we be poor why then should we lack love and a quality relationship now god then decided and said it is not good for the man to be single to be alone i am going to make someone to help him someone to bring him happiness somebody to accompany him someone to make his life complete fulfilled someone to make his life um logistically um 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 uh, logistically very caring someone to make his life um a motivational kind of life someone that when he looks at he will derive great joy someone that he can look at and begin to appreciate more of who he is someone through whom creation will be complete someone through whom he can rule with and lead with someone that he can enjoy life with someone that he can communicate with he can converse with he can talk to and listen to and 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 be able to become an exuberant fulfilled being just like god the father is not just god alone there is god the son jesus there is god the holy the, the god the spirit which is the holy spirit god loves family god exists as a family an enterprise of a godhead a family business god is a family business therefore god said i'm going to make this man someone that will bring him all these things that I've enumerated. Someone through whom their generation will remain forever from eternity to eternity. And that is how God made the man to sleep. He put him to sleep. He knocked him out. Maybe with a smile, who knows? 
but God made the man to enjoy a quality sleep. In his sleep, God took a rib out of his side, and God formed the woman with the rib. He brought a spirit being, same spirit like the man's spirit. Same spirit. The spirit of a man is not different from the spirit of a woman. The man and the woman have the same spirit. They have the same flesh. They have the same soul. The only difference is that they are different models. They perform different jobs. We have to be sensitive to our identity, who we are. In our tradition of maleness and femaleness. In our culture of human history, of our place and function. The only difference between a man and a woman is in terms of the function in nature. And that is, that is not big for you to, to see. The woman brings a child into the world. The man put the seed. The woman received the seed. And the woman brings the baby. But to care for the baby is an absolute job of both the man and the woman. Yep. That's how it is. So we have to begin to be sensitive to our job. The woman is the leader. The man is a ruler. The man needs the leader in order for him to rule. The woman is a leader and needs the man in order for her to lead. In our World Rulers Institute, God began to teach me that he want to use me to find rulers who can lead and leaders who can rule. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. It was not God that told Adam when Adam woke up and saw Eve lying by his side, beautiful. It was not God that told Adam, this is your wife. Adam had the sensitivity to know this is someone that I have to honor. This is someone who was sent to me to help me. Have you begun to pray for that person to be released into your life that has been called into existence to help you? That man into your life if you're a woman or that woman into your life if you're a man. That person who is sensitive to your need. I will talk more about this in 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 the in the other in the in the next in the uh, in the other episodes that will come with um uh, uh today wednesday or in a later day but we still have um three more series to go today yes so adam instinctively knew that this is a woman of honor just as he is a man of honor. He is the king, she's the queen. He cannot do anything until she is thoroughly informed and they are in agreement. And that's how it's supposed to be. Cultures now came about and thought that because the man was the first to have been created, that he is entitled to whoop the woman, to abuse her, to beat her up, to break her teeth, to, to treat her like a child. There are so many things on earth that only the female is capable of doing better than us. Several careers that women are like the best of the best. Yes. And I believe that there is no career that a woman cannot go and a man cannot be involved in. There is none. We have to begin to be sensitive to this fact that God cares about us so much that he is ready to give us, help us, a female, 
and if you are a man uh, uh, if you are a man a female and if you are a female he's ready to give you a man it's not a man to a man or a woman to a woman that's not how it is we have to be sensitive to the divine dynamics and the divine drama to the divine oratory divine history how divine genetics work how divine cloning works if we know this and we honor it then our generation is that shock but when the woman says well i just need somebody to give me a baby and then i'll take care of my baby i don't care then you are already breaking universal law you're already breaking the law of the universe the laws of god when you do not want the woman to be involved in the outcome of the marriage or the man to be involved in it you are already breaking the laws of god there is no justification no matter what has happened that qualifies you to be called a person of god if you do those things so we we, we should begin to ask god for the gift of sensitivity to know the role that we play in a household in human history as a male or a female but the most important thing we are learning today is this we have to be sensitive to the fact that god is ready to give us anything that is going to enhance our lives and he gives us basically a wife he gives us our sisters our moms our fathers our brothers to nourish us to make us see both sides of life both sides of the brain both sides of the head the man is an eye for what the woman cannot see the woman is an eye and an ear for what the man cannot see true so also the woman and the man they are legs they are hands for each other what you cannot do the woman can do and what the woman cannot do the man can do and then it works together it's like a bolt and a knot the problem is when women think that they have been liberated they don't need a man we have to be sensitive to the fact that if we break down and this is the reason why a lot of people are going through much insanity and stress is the lack of honor in the function of the dynamics of the male and female that's the basic problem here and that's why we lack the joy jesus said i came to give life i come to give life and to give it in excess this is part of that life that I'm talking about here. Let us begin to ask God for the gift of sensitivity so that we can begin to make happy and joyful families. In the name of God the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, our guide and our friend, we pray. Amen. And now let me begin to minister to you. Do you have somewhere where you ache? Touch that part of your body. Lay your hand on it. And as I pray, the power of God is going to move into those parts. In the name of Jesus, I call on the kingdom of the living God to release to me body, parts, and organs needed for those who are watching this program. I ask in the name of Jesus that the angels be you all the angels associated with my ministry I call on you to begin to run errand to bring about increase of health miracles signs and wonders in the life of those who are having mental problem who are having problem in their physical body who are having 
problems in their joint who are losing body parts let it return back to normalcy let normalcy return back in the name of jesus i begin to pray for those who need open doors let doors be open for you holy spirit keep ministering for you to your people to the glory of god father i begin to thank you thank you jesus i thank you for what you're doing right now thank you for what you're doing in germany thank you for what you're doing in italy thank you for what you're doing in madrid and portugal thank you for what you're doing in china in Africa, in the 50 states of the United States. Father, I begin to thank you as your power go forth into the world, bringing about the solution to human problems. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.